All right. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? How's your weekend so far? Um, I know. Oh, you got Jose in the house. Here we go. All right. Let me bring on Jose really quick. Maybe his internet connection is off a little bit. Anyways, we're going to be talking about a little bit today. We're going to do a short one, um, nice and sweet. We're going to be talking about some pipelining. Um, I know that a lot of people have been asking about getting their first clients and coming up with a system. So the first thing I want to start off with today is speed. Speed always wins in this game. The longer you start to think about it, the longer it's going to take to get your machine up and running. Um, in order to do that, I'm just going to do a whiteboard share. What's up, Jose? How you doing, brother? What's up, boss? Oh, let me get you on my headphone. All right. Jose does our setting. So you can kind of interject on here as you wish. But here I'm going to use my whiteboard and I'm going to start typing right here. Let's see. How the hell do I use this sucker? Let us go. Stop the share. Reshare it again. Get the controls back. Okay. Text box. Here we go. So we're going to go speed equals winning so our speed to market is going to be the most important like i want to encourage people to stop thinking about doing something waiting for the perfect scenario because i promise you this you won't find a perfect scenario um, we have to just put our head down and keep going so we want to keep our top of funnel pumping okay so we want to get this thing pumping the way we do that when you're just getting starting out, let's just assume you guys are a little bit new or you're under $10,000 per month. We're going to be using platforms like Facebook. We're going to use Instagram. We're going to use, you can use TikTok. Anywhere where your ideal customer hangs out. So wherever they are, go there, right? So LinkedIn. Yesterday, I had somebody who just uses only LinkedIn. And if you didn't catch that live yesterday, go check it out. Um, and they close big, huge deals like using companies or with companies like Netflix and uh, Headspace and Cheesecake Factory, like huge, huge brands with big budgets, big, juicy budgets. I um, mean, you don't have to be a big company. You just have to have something I'm going to get into in a minute here. LinkedIn. Let's just go with what else? Twitter. So so this is how I reached, like, for example, like when I was uh, early in my game, like Gary Vaynerchuk was just up and coming. I came across a video and I just loved the style of his content. So I knew he was a Twitter guy. So I tweeted and I don't tweet, but he hung out there. So I hung out there because I wanted that one person. And then we ended up getting some projects from one of his organizations just by tweeting, following his staff communicating with them, getting on the good side. So those are where you can get your traffic from, okay? Now, before we go there, we need to have an offer. Now, an offer is gonna consist of your service, your pricing. So we, when you're, I like starting with a niche, then you can go broad. If you wanna go broad in the future, that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with making choices. Um, the niche side helps quite a bit because then you can create a repeatable process. So then let me just do niche equals repeatable. And now this is what you're probably thinking. I'm scared of niching. And I cannot sell to everyone. So the, the premise behind this is if you don't know who you're selling to, how in the world are you going to find a pain point? How are you going to be able to solve a problem for somebody? Because selling to a lawyer is different than selling to a realtor, than selling to a gym owner. They're all going to have different needs. They're all going to have different services. They're all going to have different budgets. So it's going to be really hard to identify uh, with who your ideal customer is when you can't really consistently hit the pain. The pain isn't just going to be the traffic. That's going to be the obvious. The end result of what they're looking for is what they're going to be willing to pay for. So if it's more clients, if it's a stable system, if it's a hiring bottleneck, we don't know if you're going to be targeting everybody. So you'll want to start off with a niche and commit to it. Give it about six months to go all in. And when I say all in, that means speed. Okay. So now when you have your offer, 
and you have your, your pricing down, let's say, for example, you're a real estate marketing agency, you do FB ads, you don't need to do SEO, web design, everything. Focus on something easy. And now I want you to think about your future for a second. The future is, imagine if you wanted to hire a team or you wanted to outsource this. How hard would it be or how easy would it be to outsource SEO, Facebook ads, content writing, link building, a graphic design, and starting to coordinate all these different resources that you're going to have to hire on the back end? or in-house, how expensive is that gonna to be to be able to sustain that whole infrastructure? It just is gonna be a really difficult thing for you. So I suggest starting with one particular product like Facebook ads or SEO or web design, just be really, really good at it, okay? So FB ads, then we have our pricing stack. I'll just go with some examples, $1,500. And this is all plus ad spend on top of this, 1,500, 2,500, and then, 5k and then you can have custom on top of that if you need to plus custom custom just means um, it's a bigger brokerage or a bigger company and you have a larger price doing a lot of the same things multiple ads recruiting ads or whatever there can be just different campaigns running now next up now that we got this down now we need to go out to the marketplace now we're going to get some of our traffic i'm a big fan of this Call, call people. If you have no leads, pick up the phone. Another way is run ads. Pay to play, get leads, give them a scary offer. And here's where we're going to go here. I'm going to move. I'm going to change the screen really quick. Let me get a new one. How do I create a new slot right here? Plus. Okay. So now when we, well, now that we have like an offer, we have our pricing models laid out. Now we want to come up with the scary part of it. So let's say we're going to do, I will guarantee you our closing within X time period. I will guarantee you X amount of leads plus SAS to follow up so we never leak a lead. I will guarantee you, you will double your investment. Now, the risk for this is called the risk reversal. You're you got skin in the game, you can charge a little bit of higher of a price. And now it makes them feel a little bit comfortable. So like think of bigger brands, like you got like Costco, Amazon, you got McDonald's. They have really good offers like Amazon Prime, $99. For $99, you get unlimited access to all these television shows or on video. You get free shipping. And guess what that, that whole offer allows a business like them to do? It allows that big, huge business for you to go now buy a ton more stuff that you may or may not need. So it's a huge, huge benefit. And then you can return it at any given time. So the return factor gives people the ability to say, let me buy things like this microphone. I can buy it. If I don't like it, I can just exchange it or get my money back for another mic, or I can just keep it right. Like I kept this one. I'm outside of that risk reversal period where I can't return it. So that means I've given it enough time. So that's what we want to do. X amount of leads. We can have X amount of time period right here. So that you have skin in the game. they feel good becomes a win-win really really clear offer really simple we're not getting fancy we're not getting over technical we're keeping it really simple now here's where the speed comes into play 
Like you guys can come up with an offer. You can test your offers. This is the hardest part is go get traffic. Now, how are you going to get people to want to do this? How are you going to want to present this? Now, I'm not going to go over like the sales pitch or anything. I'm going to show you how you can actually go get your clients. Okay. So you can go on LinkedIn. This is without picking up the phone just yet. The goal is to get to the phone. You can automate your outreach so you can actually use a software, a tool like Linked Helper or Ulink or something like that. There's a lot of them out there. You can connect it to your LinkedIn. Just make sure you follow the terms and conditions or whatever. Um, and, and then start building your pool of audience. Once you start building your pool of audience, you can do this on FB, IG, everywhere. Just start adding, adding friends. Add a lot of people you want to reach. This is called the perfect stranger method, okay? So this is called the perfect stranger method. The perfect stranger method is a training that we host. It's inside this group. You can find it. You can use the search bar, go watch that. It's a really good way to get traffic. So the first thing we want to do, we want to get a lot of people like knowing who the heck we are. So the way we do that is we go make connections. Once we make connections, we can start the conversation with an introduction message and then start to mature it. Then once we get the maturity of it, we start posting content. Let me get a new slide. <clears throat> we start posting post content to demonstrate what it is is you do. So if you're a salesperson, post sales content, post the top ways your CRM may be leaking leads, leaking revenue out the door for you. So if you're a real estate marketer, start posting results. If you don't have results, just start talking about it. Like you can literally say, I'm about to launch some new buyer ads for clients um, in this area or clients in California, who, who wants to try it out? We should be expecting 100 leads per month. Is that something you can handle? And then just keep posting basic generic content. It doesn't have to be great at first. It's not going to be good at first. It's just going to get better over time if you're not accustomed to regularly making posts. I wouldn't really worry about more so the engagement. I would worry more about the activity to get out of your own head to actually go out and do it. That's the hardest thing is just starting. The hardest thing is just starting. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of just go over <clears throat> a little background on what I did. So I used to work at a company called Realtor.com. I quit one day, walked out in the parking lot, just used my cell phone, started calling, calling clients. And I said, hey, would it be worth it if we worked together, if I helped you manage your listing? So when you get a new listing, I'll put it all over the internet for you. So you don't even have to. I'll write the descriptions. I'll give it a nice yellow bar across the top. So it is a highlighter. So it stands out across all the other listings. So we get more traffic, we get more offers, and then you can make a bigger commission check. Best of all, your client will get the maximization of their sale. People would say, yeah, I didn't know that service existed. It said it does. Like, what would you pay $1,500 for this for the whole year for unlimited listings? Of course I would. Cool. Hang up the phone. I wasn't ready to sell it. I was just doing my market research. Next one, next one, next one. And then boom, then I was ready. Just called them. I said, all right, we're, we're going to be launching this for you. You're going to be the beta pricing that I already mentioned to you. Um, can we get started right now? Yes, 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 and yes. So all we did was literally pick up the phone. There's 1.4 million people we can call. And that's all we did. We just literally came up with an offer. We felt it was a market fit. We felt it was sexy enough for $1,500 to be able to manage unlimited listings. We calculated that, hey, the realtor sends us the pictures, the MLS link, we'll do the description, take us what, 20 minutes per, per, per person per year. So we had a huge, huge revenue pool. We just now needed clients. We had the profit margin we were looking for. Then all we had to do was, how are we going to get in front of them? So all we literally did was put a little page up it wasn't really good. It was no better than a Google Doc or that whiteboard that I, I shared with you. In fact, we never even sent a single person to it. 
So nobody really even saw it, even though it was there is more for us to even just read what we even do in case we even forgot um, just to make it easy. Because sometimes when you're presenting, you have a tendency in the beginning to possibly say yes too much to too many requests or you just make stuff up if based on the reaction of the client and you just go down their rabbit hole. This kept it really focused and really clear. Um, then we evolved into something called banner ads. Those are like the graphics you see on a Facebook ad. We were doing them on the Google platform. The, they're called display ads. All we were selling was these one graphics to one particular niche and we sold it in volume. And the way we did it is we flung out Fung out. We found out where they hang out. Where did they congregate? So for real estate agents, they hang out on realtor.com. They spend money there. Homes.com, Trulia, Zillow, all these other websites that are out there. And guess what they do there? They advertise. So once we knew they advertised, we would click their ad. We would find their contact information. We would call them and make them a very direct offer. We would get the association saying, hey, I saw your ad on Realtor.com, on homes.com, on x.z.com. Like, how's, how's that ad working for you? Do you think it can actually have some more upside? Would you be open to the idea that if I told you you can have a higher conversion rate, we can actually redesign it, not only redesign it, but test multiple ads so you know which one's winning. But more importantly, like the audience isn't going to get bored. Going to get bored. They're going to see the same thing over and over. Do you think that at some point it's going to have fatigue where they just don't even see it because they've seen it so many times? What if we just changed it around a little bit? So that was our ascension model. Instead of buying one, we'd buy it, sell them four, sometimes five. Then we created packs, five pack, 10 pack, 20 pack as we started to sell the single unit. And that allowed us to expand our revenue. So sometimes we we're selling these things for $800 is because they're complex moving ads, flash design, HTML5. The still graphics were a little bit lower. The animated GIFs were a little bit higher. So it was like JPEGs, GIF, animation. Um, so we started getting really good at this and we started hiring and outsourcing. Um, so all we would do is say, hey, here's our sexy offer. We'll create this little unit it will write all the copy. It will pull all the graphics for you. We'll write the compelling thing when you will send it to you VIP style with a white glove on and we'll call you and saying, hey, your banner has been delivered. Look in it. We created an email template with the rules saying, dear so-and-so, the banner's ready. Please have a look. If you approve now, we can go live. If you have any changes, then we can't go live. However, here's how you can actually send us the changes back. One, change this to this. Two, change this to this. So we gave them like an exact format so we didn't have to sit on the phone. So trust me, I sat on the phone for a fucking banner ad like this big for like an hour before in the back in the days. And I'm like, oh my God, I just want to like, are you kidding me? Like, this is bullshit. Like, what the fuck do you want to talk about? It's like four inches long. Like, well, how can we talk this long? So we created this format. We would just give them a courtesy call saying, hey, check the email. If you hit, if you got it, if it's approved, hit reply. Yes, I approve. Launch it. And we told them the exact words to copy and paste so they didn't even have to think for themselves. Um, and then we started to add other stacks like, hey, give us the approval, but then write your kind words of what you liked about it so we can actually use those screenshots for testimonials um, in the future. So we just created a folder on our on our emails called love it. And then we would just place it into a centralized area. We weren't using Google drive back then. We were using like a centralized server. So we just put um, all our screenshots all in one place. So we can use that in marketing, use that to upsell, cross sell other clients, um, just like in those situations. So we kept something super fucking simple, absolutely abundantly simple. Now that simplicity of being a master of like this one thing opened up a lot of other avenues for us. Um, we started working only on the real estate side with realtor.com. We ended up doing some, some non-official work with, with like Zillow, Realty Track, Listing Book. It just became such an obsessive focus that we, there was so much opportunity in this one little niche with this one little product that like was so available to everybody because the thing we were selling for $150. I mean, we were selling it at $800, sometimes sometimes $2,000, depending on like how complex it was. Uh, but we standardized our pricing. For the most part, there's very unique situations where the price went high. It was mostly $150 um, uh, to $500 for the animated stuff. Uh, but it allowed us to just focus on one niche. It was so easy. Who would have thought that you can sell a graphic to one industry 
and just go do that at scale. We sold probably like around like 150,000 of these things over time. Um, but then we started to expand. When, then once we realized, oh, we can, we can actually do this outside of real estate. So we contacted other ad networks. This is a video I also have in this group under the guides tab, the very first one. Um, how to make your clients your best salespeople. <clears throat> so the, what I mean by that is we would contact salespeople at other companies that sold banner design, my product, our product. And we would say, hey, who does the fulfillment when you sell this product? Oh, we don't have anybody in-house. We just have the client figure it out. I'm like, cool. Like, are there ever situations where clients take forever getting you the graphics and then it impacts the contract because they can't go live until this thing is done. So they were paying tens of thousands of dollars for that advertisement with no actual design, no advert, right? So the marketing platform was available. The design to put on it wasn't available. So it actually aged the contract. So somebody who's got closed today, and if they didn't give something for three months, guess what? Their contract starts when it launches. So we solved that problem for the sales rep. So we got the sales reps to now say, hey, spread us around. We'll knock this shit out, unlimited revisions. We'll do this in one or two business days. We'll actually consult the client over the phone so they don't have to go to an internet site and fill in a credit card and be like, I don't know when I'm going to get it, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So we took away that, that fear, that uncertainty, and now they had uh, confidence that they can actually pick up the phone. So that was our added scary offer. That was our benefit. We found a unique selling proposition because <clears throat> the salesperson just wanted the, to fulfill the obligation, eliminate chargeback, eliminate risk, get their commission checks from it, right? So they were solving a problem for their client. So we got that spread. And when once we got enough people that we felt good enough, then we'd reach out to the regional manager. Then we'd reach out to the person above them. Then we'd try to get an official relationship. And it would just be rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So we did that with a lot of platforms. Once we started to get, let's say, a lot more competition, we had to make a move. We couldn't really survive at the revenue we wanted to hit, just focus on this model. So we rolled out another service at that particular time. Then we started doing SEO. Then we started contacting, instead of going to directly to the end, the end users, the people who would be buying the service directly, we would call lead aggregators, buy the leads from them to then go to the end user to sell to them, saying so-and-so recommended us for XYZ service. And then we started going direct to competitors. We went to Google and all we type in is Dallas Marketing Agency, <clears throat> Austin, Texas Marketing Agency, San Francisco Marketing Agencies. And we'd find people in the, we knew our criteria. We didn't want like what Gary V is today, like Vayner Media with 1500 people, million decision makers. We wanted the boutique people. We wanted the people who had like under 20 employees. They're probably doing about four to 5 million in revenue. Even if they're doing under, I didn't care about the under, but this was like the ideal person. We can actually pick up the phone. We can click their website. We can see their services. We can see they offered this, this display advertising. We can see that they offered PPC advertising. So our brains were thinking, okay, they do display our graphics. They do PPC, not SEO. So then there and lies our outreach, pick up the phone, introduce ourselves, call them, see if there's an opportunity to work for them. And that's when we would be able to say, look, we'll do a free audit for you. We'll show you what we're made of. Let's skip the interview altogether. And if you like what you see, would that be a possibility that we can actually work together on projects? And then we identify volume. So let's just say it was a good fit. You liked what we had. Do you have clients that you can present this service to? And we can go over all the pricing. We can see what the upside is, how we're going to be in this relationship, whether it's you just referring people to us. Or are you going to project management and manage it? And you're our client where you bring in five other clients. Right. So that's one method is using that partnership model. You can call it a joint venture model, give it whatever name you want. Uh, but that was our number one way of getting clients is that we niche down, we had our product, we had our pricing, we found our traffic, and then speed took over. We, we spent the whole day, literally the entire day prospecting because without prospecting, how are we going to get clients? Because we had to keep our top of the funnel extremely full. 
That's the most important part, especially if you don't have money to do paid ads. There's so many ways around it. You can literally pick up the phone. It's not cold calling. It's just offering your service. You kind of have to gamify yourself. I was lucky working for corporate in some respect because that's how things got done. You had metrics you had to hit. It was, it was mathematical equations to their CEOs, their executive staff. However, they came up with the numbers. It was a good thing in the long run. <clears throat> because it does, it is all about the numbers. You want more people to see what you do so you can make more offers and make more money. Then you just improve along the way. So, um, and it also makes it a lot easier to train because when we, when we closed realtor.com for a huge contract, um, if you saw in my office, like we probably had the, an office to fit about six people, seven people, like really comfortably, we had about 30 people in that same sized office. Just my, my desk had five people on it. Like literally we were, we had enough room where if you're right-handed or left-handed and you're eating at your desk to, to move outside of that, we were really on top of each other. It was a fun time, uh, but it allowed us to systematize everything. That was the most important part because I've gotten into the trap where it's like, I'll, I'll offer something up. to me. It's easy. Cause I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough to do it, but then I didn't want to do it. I had to give it to somebody else and they couldn't do it. Because we're doing too much. I'd be like, hey, Bill, do SEO contract. Hey, Bill, do the PPC. Hey, Bill, do the send the ads to the, the designer to get it back to the client. Bill couldn't actually function at the top of his game because Bill's good at two, one or two things. And it wasn't the one or two things I was giving him. So it, it created bottlenecks. It created cancellations. And it created us to start to lose our shit. And then we're like, fuck, maybe the solution is do it cheaper. And then people will like a broken product. No, that wasn't the case. It was obvious. We actually had to solve the simplicity of the end result we wanted. We wanted to make more money. We wanted to have fun doing it. We wanted to offer a high quality product. We wanted to have quality controls. And we wanted to have the ability to enjoy the time with the client versus having client meetings. And then you just feel like you're getting, like a, you're running into a firing squad. Um, that's what it happens when you do too much because then you start to hate what you do and then you start to not do the thing you wanted to do the most. Um, so keep it really, really freaking simple. That's really the most important part. But when we had all these people in the office, there were like 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds. Like I was probably the oldest person in the, in the room at the time because we created a machine. I hired a person to train everybody because I didn't want to train. I was always constantly cold calling, outreaching, coming up with ideas, meeting with people. So I created a duplication process where I can buy more time and say, okay, I can make a couple hundred or $300 in every hour if I, if I do what I'm good at. So instead of doing the, the 15 or $12 an hour work, I just paid people $12 an hour to do that. And then I realized, okay, if I'm making 300, I can hire X amount of people every, for every hour. I can say, let me keep my profit. Let me put back money into the business. I don't want to go to zero because <clears throat> I don't have to. I'll allocate some to people, some to marketing because we didn't do any marketing and we were a marketing agency when we first started, right? That's like a lot of you. We just used our phones. We bought leads um, and then we started to run ads. Once we started to run ads, that's when we started to attract bigger brands like Geico's and like huge brands. I mean, like Coleman, Advertise.com, CBS, they all found us through our ads and we ended up getting contracts with all of those companies. So it was a pretty cool thing, but we had to solve the first thing. We had to realize that we couldn't do it all. We couldn't just simply white label and outsource because then our sales suffered too, because then we had to have the stress of lack of fulfillment, staying up all night, wondering if that client's going to email or text us. That's not the case because when you own this business, when you own your marketing agency, your coaching business, you're going to be wearing many hats. Just simplify the hats you're going to be wearing so you can actually duplicate the process. So I was able to duplicate it through 18, 19 year olds, and I hired somebody that was a better communicator than I was. And he just took the ball and ran, wrote some SOPs, hired a manager above him that can manage a bunch of youngsters and make sure that the, the, everybody's hitting their numbers. Um, our numbers, when I was selling, our numbers were 75 dials, four hours phone time, uh, $3,000 in sales per day. That's my realtor.com quota. Um, we had to get new business and new business. At the time, we had like 7% commission. Re re renewal business was 3%. And they kept lowering it and lowering it and lowering it. So what we were given was a database and we were backed by the big name. So all we had to do was cold call. So they would call it a book of business, even though it was just a database of all the realtors. Um, but that's all we did. It was very simple. We cold called, we emailed them, we followed up. The follow-up is so 
Like, I don't, I don't care about one call, two call, 20 call closes. You guys get to decide your own process. We can teach you it if you like to. Um, but the reality is no matter what your process stick to it, have a system behind it. So if I have to call someone and I know it's a three call process, have those three calls. What are they going to be? What are they going to be about? Just write down the steps. And then what happens after that third call, if they don't buy from you and if they do buy from you, what's next? So have those little steps and those processes, because today we use SaaS, we use go high level for our CRM and we can automate a lot of things. So if somebody's a new lead, we have a new lead call them. Jose, you call all those leads. He can now write his notes in there. He can move them, mark them as dead, fake number. Oh, good prospect. Triage from discovery call set. From discovery, we go through, make sure it's a good fit. Then it goes to sales. Once it goes to sales, it goes to the next step. New client, long-term nurture, short-term nurture. So we can create this content around this machine as we're starting to grow it. But the first thing, going back to what I initially started with, is that we need to know our who, who are we selling to? We want to pick the niche. We want to have our product and our product that we're going to be selling our service. We want to do, don't do too much, do less. And that'll be your saving grace. Save yourself a year or two right there. Um, attach a price and a value to it, have a risk reversal and just go where they go. Like I just had this conversation last night with, with one of our GSD students about like time blocking, like block time out and stay true to it. If you don't feel good about the thing you're doing, maybe pivot. If you don't want a cold call, go on LinkedIn. If that's where you need your most comfort, go on, start on LinkedIn, get some momentum, then get to the call because all roads for the most part are going to be leading to selling by phone for a lot of you guys. If you guys sell by webinar, that's perfectly fine too. You could do the one to many pitches and sell at the end or book calls or whatever it may be, but know who you're selling to <clears throat> because that's going to be the easiest thing in the world. Uh, when, once you start to get better at the craft, you practice it, but, um, but, but it takes hard work takes a lot of work. Like uh, I spent probably the first three, five years, just 24 seven grinding. Uh, when I say 24 seven, sometimes it was actually 24 hours a day. Sometimes it was 48 hours straight of just prospecting, building my list, reading the books, writing my scripts, changing my angles of how am I going to get in to the door with this person? So it took with the bigger, the project I did research, the smaller, the, the prospect, I did no research at all. I call that the Brett Favre method. Just be a gunslinger. Chuck the fucking ball up. Someone's going to catch it. It's going to be the opponent or you. But the point was it was speed because if I wanted to get better, I wanted to fail faster. That was the number one advice that I gave myself and other people was what's the worst that can happen if you call somebody? What are they going to hang up on you? That's all right. If you find that as a trend, then you might want to change the approach. But I won't look at it as like it's rejection. Oh, my God, poor me. I got to go tell my mom and dad about it. I would look at it as no, this is like your ability to do market research immediately live right now, right after this call that I'm even on right now, because it's Saturday. A lot of businesses are open. A lot of businesses don't have the business that they want. Now we have to get good at that sales process. But the sales process really doesn't make a lot of sense to me if you don't have a traffic machine. I'm not saying don't study sales. I think that's the number one skill everybody should have. But all of these other things are equally as important because if you have a sales skill and nobody to sell it to, you're just a talented person with no one to talk to. So <clears throat> when you're running the coaching biz, the consultancy, the marketing agency, you do wear a lot of hats. You just have to simplify the process. And if you want the help, feel free, reach out to us. We got a lot of resources. We got some free. We got some coaching available to you guys too. So if you do want some help, don't feel shy to reach out. You don't have to go at it alone. There's so much access to talent and people in the internet right now, especially with like the pandemic um, that actually helped open up people to be more accustomed to hire remotely. Um, and it helped a lot of your clients think along that same vein. A lot of your clients are thinking like, hey, well, I don't necessarily have to hire even a lawyer in my office. They could be down the street. They could be in a different county, right? So, so access to people is just expanded, but that just opened up the biggest marketplace of them all, the ability to sell people virtually. So you can sell to people in the UK if you're in California or in Texas or in San Francisco or whatever. Because now people are so accustomed to using social media more and more because guess what they were doing while they're at home? Hopping on Facebook, hopping on TikTok, hopping on Twitter, hopping on their favorite platform to be able to communicate with the world. What that allowed is the world is on Facebook, on TikTok, all these platforms. The business owners realize that. 
Now it's your job to go get in front of those business owners so they can capitalize. All right, guys, if you need some help, feel free to reach us out. Um, Jose, you stay on for a second. Um, happy Saturday. Enjoy whatever it is you do. I'll talk to you guys on the next live stream.